With the sun setting on the rolling rainy hills of South Central Florida, it's time for Far Out Radio. I'm Scott Teeters. Today is Monday. It is November the 17th, 2014. Hope you had a great day, a nice weekend. Had a chance to rest and recharge, a little recreation time, hopefully. Recreation is an interesting word because when you take it apart, you get recreation. Recreation need not be an activities-filled thing. It can be a time of resting, catching your breath, smelling the roses, enjoying the things of life with no price tag, and also recreating yourself. And now it is early Monday evening, and the workday is pretty much done here on the East Coast and late afternoon on the West Coast time, and the workday will soon be over. If you're listening to the archives, well, it's whatever time of day is convenient for you. Either way, let's get into some far-out radio. Michael Horn is back with us this evening. Michael was last with us on June the 11th of this year to tell us about the odd and strained relationship between MUFON and the Billy Meyer material. Billy has no problem with MUFON. It's the other way around. It's where the rub occurs. And you can catch Michael's previous visits by going to faroutradio.com. Look on look for the bright Far Out Radio on YouTube graphic on the right side. When you click through, look for the playlist tabs. And uh, that's where you'll find the playlist for Michael's previous Far Out Radio visits. Michael Horn is the official American representative for UFO contactee Billy Meyer, a man who is arguably the most controversial figure in the world of ufology. His UFO photographs are strange and compellingly beautiful. Debunkers have unsuccessfully attacked the images as fakes using astonishingly weak arguments. The photographs were taken long before the days of easy access to computer graphics and software. These were the days back when photos of UFOs were typically fuzzy and blurred, and special effects photography required advanced darkroom skills. However, many of Billy's photos are crystal clear, thus making his distractors claim that the ships in the photos are merely models. And if so... That is some mighty impressive model and darkroom photography work for a man with only one arm. No, the world of ufology is filled with controversy, much of which has been fomented by government and military disinformation agents. Honest people have been led astray, bamboozled, and hoodwinked. If you are a Netflix subscriber, do watch the Watch Instantly film titled Mirage Men. The film is the story of U.S. Air Force Intelligence Officer Richard Doty and what he and the United States Air Force did to military contractor and World War II veteran Paul Benowitz. Essentially, they drove the man insane. Fortunately, not everyone that works for or worked for some of the government agencies are spooky, nefarious types. Michael Horn was nice enough to send me several Billy Myers news updates. It seems that another NASA engineer has come forward. Uh, endorsing not only the reality of UFOs, but also, in this case, specifically Billy Meyer. I'm referring to NASA engineer Matthew, and I'll let, I'll let Michael try to get this fellow's last name out. It's a real tongue twister. Uh, we have a link to uh, this article and the other articles that we mention at the bottom of today's post. Now, just yesterday, November the 16th, 2014, Michael published a long and detailed photo analysis of Billy Meyer's energy ship UFO photos. Another update details the report from the United Nations that confirms what Billy Meyer wrote and warned about back almost five decades ago about the irreversible man-made climate change. Of course, it would help if we would stop diddling with the weather for fake reasons. Michael also wrote about the spiritual aspect of the Meyer material and that the UFO part is really just the eye candy and is not necessarily the main point. It's as if the Plajarans came here and all we're interested in is their car. Hey dudes, where'd you got under the hood of that spaceship? No, sorry, there is a much bigger message there. Yes, lots going on in the world of Billy Meyer and Michael Horn. And you can keep up with Michael's work at his website, theyfly.com. Michael, welcome back to the program. Hi, Scott. Thanks for having me back on. Thank you very much. Indeed. Since we last talked in early June in San Mateo, California, Michael or Heinrich Palmgren of Red Ice Radio hosted the Secret Space Program and Breakaway Civilization Conference. I watched. We watched the uh, the conference live via the uh, streaming, and uh, several things impressed me. First was the move away from the position of when will the government tell us the truth. 
you know, the disclosure project effort. And the attitude yeah. of the conference was more like, we know the crafts are real, some of the crafts are ours, many are ETs, and there are many different kinds of ETs, and they've been visiting and interacting with us for a long, long, long time. Now, as a student of the Meyer material, what does, I was curious this afternoon, what does Billy have to say about the different kinds of visitors and how long they have been interacting with us? Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I missed the first part of that. Did you want me to uh, address that, the different visitors and all that? Yeah, I mean, since you're you're a student of uh, the Billy Meyer material, what did he have to say, if anything, about the different kinds of visitors and how long they have been interacting with us? Because Well, sure. Look, um, at this point, historically, quite literally, and these answers that I may give you today uh, may not satisfy a lot of people out there because... At this point, I can I can say that there is no other evidence that I'm aware of of actual verifiable, let alone ongoing contacts between any Earth people and any extraterrestrial race. Maybe somebody's had something, but we don't have the hard evidence. There's certainly, nothing within light years of what Meyer has produced, and the history, according to Meyer, according to this material of extraterrestrials interacting with people on Earth and having anything to do with us it spans millions of years. But the focal point now must be, in, in our opinion, on what is going on in the world today. The UFO part of things, the, the uh, extraterrestrial element, the so-called alien abductions and experiencers, pardon me, but this is a huge, huge waste of time. It is not what is moving our world forward into an abyss. It is not what we have to deal with on a daily basis. It is not the sum and substance of those things that are going to you know, impact more and more and more people on a daily basis. And it is that the Meyer case has, effectively since actually 48 and 51, Meyer has been warning specifically, especially, about the environmental damage. And we are about, historically, according to the Meyer material, we are about to now begin to experience what he has long warned about. We ain't seen nothing yet. The climate change that Billy foretold back in 51, global warming in 58, he's the first person to address this. And this, in addition to all the geopolitical events that are rapidly unfolding, should be grabbing people's attention, and it should be, in my opinion, done with an eye on the Meyer material because it is linked into how we can help ourselves assure our own future survival. You know, it's occurred to me, Michael, over the last few years that the, the true horror of what is going on, I'm mostly thinking about that, that gigantic geological MRSA sewer on the other side of the planet called Fukushima that just will not go away. It's not going to go away by itself, and it just continues to spew out radiation, the likes of which we've never, ever seen before, and nobody seems to have any idea about what to do with it. This is so big and so huge that it makes things like alien abductions and things that go bump in the night a heck of a lot more easier to accept and swallow than truth. And, you know, when I look at the at what's going on over on the other side of the planet with Fukushima, I have to look uh, to New York City and to the United Nations and say, what in the hell are you guys doing up there besides trying to administer Agenda 21? Yeah. Well, look, uh, your, your point is well taken. Billy Meyer published information on Fukushima within one week, approximately one week of the event, he already had been notified and published information that this was already what they call an ultra-super-worst possible case scenario. Meltdown, contamination, which will spread for centuries worldwide. It is in the water, the food chain, the air. This is something that is, you know, it's been removed from the, the news. It's, it's uh, bad for business, and I think the, you know, the consciousness that is suppressing this information is is complicit. It's, it's it's treasonous to humanity. We Meyer warned about that. I mean, 
you know, where do you start with this stuff, right? Yeah. I honestly don't know because, you know, we just had another election, uh, selection, <laughs> Uh, before the uh, uh, the, uh, the election a few weeks ago, I was doing some research because I had a few political guys on. I was doing some research, and it's absolutely astonishing that when members of Congress uh, run for re-election, uh, generally between uh, about uh, 87 to 92 percent of the times, they get re-elected, despite the fact that other times when they do uh, satisfaction surveys, they're like, well, how satisfied are you with your Congress critter? You know, they average, they, they come in averaging between 10 and 15 percent, you know, not well liked, you know, and this is nothing new. I mean, a hundred and some years ago, Mark Twain was uh, was on, a, on the case about, you know, members of Congress. I think he sardonically said something to the effect one time that, uh, suppose I was an idiot, suppose I was a, in Congress. But well, wait a minute, I just repeated myself. You know? So it's been an old problem, but we just keep reelecting the same people, and they just go on about the same business. It's not unbelievable. It is, and if you look at the Meyer material, it's extremely harsh about all of this. You see, as you mentioned, the UFO and extraterrestrial part, while it is authentic, verifiable, verified, all the rest, it is not the important part. They have tried... Look, this, you know, Meyer's context spans 72 plus years now. And he's been publishing since, as I said, actually since 48 and 51. So for over 60 years, they have been warning, trying to get us to pay attention to learn how to think. Our political system, and as they are not shy about saying it, our religions as well, are all created to lead people uh and in a way in which they are impressed with the idea that their power is outside of themselves, that it is either in deities, saviors, saints, and angels, and other non-existent imaginary beings, or equally imaginary extraterrestrials for the most part, as well as equally inept leaders that they keep on re-electing. I should tell you that as far back as 1975, Meyer was told that by or about 2020, the probability is extremely high that the U.S. will be in full-blown anarchy. He also predicted in 1981 and in 87 that there will be two coming U.S. civil wars, something that I laughed about when I first read it in 86. I wouldn't laugh about it now because it's pretty obvious that the polarization here is so enormous, so enormous, not unlikely at all. I've heard this this business about, like you, I've heard this business about, uh, you know, a second American Civil War, and um, gosh, the first time I heard it was maybe 12, 13 years ago, and at the time it seemed like, okay, well, all right, maybe a lot of us don't like George W. Bush, but we're not going to go to war yeah. over it with one another. Uh, although it sure seemed like that on that tw on that uh, 2000 election, man, that was just uh, something we don't ever want to do again. But uh, uh, I've been noticing ever since that time that things like uh, entertainment have just gotten to be so extreme. And I've talked about this many times with other guests about how extreme our entertainments have become. And it's it's uh, I believe it's a plan to keep people uh, uh, just distracted with more and more crazy stuff. And I came across something the other day that had to do with smartphones. And uh, what it pointed out was that these, these devices are just unbelievably um, distracting for people's attention so to the extent that I think, you know, a lot of people say, you know, we're turning into a world of zombies. And I think we're going to turn into a world of cell phone zombies as we, as we move forward on these things because everything is becoming smart. Everything is, is being tied into smartphones. And again, it, it gets you out of uh, a larger awareness of your surroundings and what's going on and more focused on yourself. Yes. It's, kind of, I, I it's a huge distraction. Horrible stuff. Uh, I had some years ago said, this is the new pod people, the I, iPod people. Yeah, and it's like, pod people. <laughs> you know, uh, for those that have the reference point of, you know, the body snatchers, whatever right. the film is called, right? The of the body um, snatchers. Yeah, you know, the pod people. So we now have the iPod people, and that is 
everybody who walks around glued to the device in their hand, uh, ceaselessly texting and scrolling and, and, you know, trolling and all the rest of it. Uh, I have a basic cell phone that I try not to use it, if at all possible. I'm terrible at texting. I don't like it. Uh, I find that there are more and more people unable to hold a conversation face to face that mm-hmm. can actually, you know, relate to another human being, and it's pretty sad. It's, you know, kind of what we're stuck with at this point. Billy Meyer had also in 1958 predicted the portable telephone and the fact that they would, the way I forget the exact wording, I'm not looking at it, but it was that it would be so ubiquitous and annoying that people would be using it all, I think he said all opportune and inopportune moments. 1958, he foretold it. And he also, at the same, in the same information, he foretold biochipping. And that unless people really woke up that the U.S. in in conjunction with the EU, which of course didn't even exist yet for 11 years, that people uh, in conjunction with the EU would be biochipped in mass until the world was literally enslaved. That thought doesn't bother people. You know, so in a sense, they, you know, the, the masses have already surrendered their privacy, their control over themselves. And the final element will be some form of chipping that they are just now completely monitored and controlled. And it's, uh, you know, all these phones and devices, they all have, of course, in them already for some time, very, you know, all the tracking and listening devices and what have you. I don't worry about it only because I'm somebody, you know, and perhaps you, you know the same thing. If you have a somewhat public life, if you're busy inserting yourself into the world of the media as best you can, you know then that your privacy in many ways is going to be non-existent. For people who do not have that focus in their life, who are not participating in that way, they are giving up something extremely precious. They just don't realize it. You know, many years ago, I had the uh, I had a conversation with a with a woman who unfortunately suffered the experience of not only losing a child, but this, she had a teenage, uh, uh, teenage child and the, there was an argument and the child went off, you know, in a huff in the winter time and wasn't properly dressed. And they found the child the next day in the park, sitting on a bench, you know, and died from hypothermia. And right. my friend's position was that if my child had been chipped, they'd have been able to easily find him. And I wouldn't have, that wouldn't have happened. So I don't have any problem at all with being chipped. Okie dokie, you know, what else are you going to say? Well, yeah, well, I see your point. You know, because you can always come up with some kind of a um, a scenario that makes the the seemingly unacceptable acceptable. Yeah, well, but. And folks will get in line for it. it sounds good to them. Sure. We can always, you know, and, and it is in, in, in cases where something terrible is happen to somebody, as you say, we can understand how they would, at that point, give anything. They would have been glad to have their child ship themselves and who knows what, anything to have prevented that loss. It's a terrible thing. But, uh, you know, these are the ways in which also humanity gets uh, goes down the slippery slope with, well, this will prevent that and this will fix this. And, uh, you know, I mean, take it... <laughs> You can take it in so many directions, but the, the point is, you know, uh, there are accidents that happen throughout history. Bad things happen, and they happen to good people as well. We have to try to do the best we can without so totally giving up our self-responsibility and power. And this has been built into people through religion, basically. And, you know, people may not like to hear it, but this has been going on for several thousand years. Well, so that you know, on a cellular level, you know, they... There's a, a sky daddy. My, my friend in Australia, Ramirez, says, you know, calls it sky daddy. And people think there's somebody up there that is controlling everything that they have to pray to mm-hmm. and all the rest of it. Of course, among many things that I've said is if, this, if there was a perfect omnipotent being is actually in charge of everything, why do you have to pester it to try to make it correct mistakes in your life, which are not of anybody but your own, you know, your own making? But... Logic is not something that believers in any system, whether it's religious or political, want to partake of. And that's why the, the sorrow of the Playar and, and Meyer is that so few people know how to think 
and want to be completely responsible for themselves, their thoughts and their and their feelings and their actions. This is the key, and it's simple, but it's difficult, <laughs> and it's it's what is we have hammering away at us when we dig deeper into the Meyer material. It's pretty obvious. You know, I didn't expect we were going to be going in this direction, but since you mentioned that Billy Meyer wrote about a second American Revolution, did he elaborate? Or I'm sorry, a second Civil War. Did he elaborate on that? Did he talk about how it would turn out, or how long, well, it would, or anything like that? Yes, just a little bit. Actually, there's two more Civil Wars coming, one following upon the other, according to uh, this information. One following upon the other. So, what we are told here is that it, uh, I'm kind of paraphrasing, um, and it cannot be helped but that we break up into five uh, territories, each under a form of sectarian dictatorial rule. That's not a good thing to be, you know, no. considering. But no. indeed, they have said, you know, that this, and and then. Because in the prophecies, and by the way, this is the same prophecies where Meyer foretold the Ebola epidemic, where he foretold the current Russian military movements, and he warned about the attack on the WTC. Now, that wasn't made public, that part of it, you know, until afterwards, but we can certainly prove it was all, you know, given to him and disseminated in the close circle of, of people, but... Once that was released, which was right after the WPC attack, we know that he's predicted the Russian military movements, Ebola, the Islamic fanaticism, all this stuff, well before it has occurred verifiably. So, yeah, you know, there you go. Michael, we have our music playing in the background, so we're going to take a little bit of a breather break. Everybody calm down. <laughs> Michael Horn is our guest tonight. If you just joined us and we're talking about uh, some new things that have come out uh, on Michael's website, theyfly.com. That's where you can keep up with uh, all the latest developments of the uh, uh, UFO contactee, Billy Meyer, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Far Out Radio. If you're just joining us, Michael Horn is with us this evening. Michael is the official American spokesperson for UFO contactee Billy Meyer. And we're talking about some recent developments uh, from Billy Meyer. And you can keep up with uh, all of Michael's updates and uh, other Billy Meyer related material at Michael's website, theyfly.com. Theyfly.com. He's very active on the website, so there's always lots of new stuff there. Michael, how in the world did you get the wedding cake picture on the uh, big photo screen there in Times Square? Yeah, well, that's real. It's not Photoshop, too. What happened was I wanted to put out a press release on the Pentagon report, and I contacted a company that uh, you know does professional press releases, and part of the package that I could get if I acted now was to have a, a one image displayed for 15 seconds in Times Square <laughs> when they, you know, put out the press release. And so I took the photograph of the wedding cake UFO, attached it to my press release, and voila, there it is, shown right in the center of Times Square. I think it was on a Thursday or Friday evening during rush hour. So we made it to, to Times Square with the, the most suppressed <laughs> story in human history. There it is. How about that? I wonder if anybody looked at it and said, what's that? <laughs> well, you know, uh, we know that people are a bit jaded and uh, glib and, you know, they've seen it all. And for 15 seconds, when you're if you're going through Times Square in a car, you're probably, you know, uh, paying attention, hopefully, to the stop-and-go traffic and all the rest of it. But the value of it was to show that we did get it there. And we got a great, you know, they take the photos of the displays for you, and then, which they did, of course, in this case. And we are, uh, you know, recently in, in conjunction with that, of course, the uh, this thing called the WC UFO is is short for Wedding Cake UFO. Mm -hmm. uh, Meyer's photos were, uh, and consequently the video he took of it, were authenticated by a professor, you know, in South America. I think we may have touched on this before. That's yes. real. That is, Meyer was within 15 to 20 feet when he took the photograph broad daylight. So 
it, it really does uh, frustrate me, I have to be honest about it, when people carry on about lights in the sky, the MUFON type of thing, and all this UFO industry nonsense of alien this and alien that, most of it, of course, is indeed secret military. There may be a scattering. There, you know, there is some extraterrestrial craft that can be occasionally seen in you know over our countries. Nobody's contacting us. They are observing us because we're so certifiably insane uh, with all the war that we're doing and that we're about to bring down upon ourselves and the world that there's no benefit for any extraterrestrials to be walking around on Earth at this time. And it's saying howdy, or certainly none of them are working under the desert grounds in Area 51. Now, I'm, I'm curious, it just thought popped into my head, since you attend quite a few of these UFO conferences, have you ever had the opportunity to, at nighttime, go up on the roof with uh, when Ed Grimsley was there and have a peek through those military-grade uh, uh, night vision goggles? Because everyone that does is just blown away. I mean, I don't, there's no indication as to exactly what it is, but there ain't bugs, that's for sure. Uh, and if it's if it's if it's ETs, there's a lot of traffic up there. And if it's our stuff, uh, what in the heck's going on? But it's pretty wild. Have you ever had a chance well, to have a look see? I actually have never looked through the the goggles. I've had seven UFO sightings myself. Uh, the closest that I may have told you was I was within to about 20 feet of a small play iron monitoring craft. In 2011, it was, I think, October 3rd, when I lived in the mountains of Brazil for a while. And it was a little startling because it was, uh, you know, a, it looked like a glowing white egg shape that was moving around. It was not a, wasn't the uh, firefly that I initially thought it might have been. It wasn't a star. Uh, and then I've had six other sightings. Let's see, I think all the rest. No, one was, uh, another one, the first one was actually at night also in Sedona with a fairly unusual craft, and then the rest of them were all broad daylight, and I've had witnesses with me, I think, for four of the seven sightings. So seeing things, I'm pretty satisfied that all but maybe two of the sightings were terrestrial military craft. It, I, I just have to say it's so, you know, I, I'm just saying this to the community out there, people that are interested, it's so unimportant now what's flying around. You can't do anything with it, whether it's extraterrestrial or terrestrial. If we don't start paying attention to what this, the content of this Meyer case is just mind-boggling for what they have freely given to us. You know, it's like, sure, I've got films. As a matter of fact, you know, if, if one of your listeners buys my film and they just put your name in the, in the order, I send them another film for free. You know, I can do a two-for-one, okay? That's a product. But you can go to my website and my blog and read literally hundreds of pages of free information. And from the websites linked from my site, you'll find out that this whole thing with UFOs and ETs has, pardon me, it's been the biggest waste of most people's lives. Hmm. I've also, in the last six months or so, heard a few people on other programs, like Coast to Coast, Basically, say you know what I'm I'm done. I I've been chasing this thing around for decades. It's gotten me nowhere. I've spent a lot of money, a lot of time. I could have been doing something else. Uh, people don't like me. They think I'm a nut job. Uh, you know, and on and on and on. I'm done. I've had, I've had it. I'm done. <laughs> Good choice. That's what I would tell Good them. Choice. <laughs> yeah, because look, you know, I don't get invited anymore to the UFO conferences because. If anybody pays attention to the fire case, they really have to wonder what, what did we sit through before this and where did we sit through anything else? The, all of this stuff, all of it, is speculative. There are no UFO experts out there. I, I, I modestly put myself as the world's leading authority or expert on UFOs. Why? Because I represent the minor case, and that's extraterrestrial UFOs. I've been within 20 feet of one of the craft. None of these other people have. I've received information from the extraterrestrials passed to me through Meyer. It turned out to be 100% verifiably accurate, prophetically accurate. None of these people have any contact. Stephen Greer, with these phony, run out to the desert, pay me hundreds of dollars to have contact with ETs. That's the most shameful hucksterism scam, snake oil salesmanship going on. This is just an industry, people. And if you want the real deal, you get it for free. Go to my website. 
challenge the stuff. You can test the WC UFO photo yourself. It takes you less time to test it in Photoshop than it does to open Photoshop. What, uh, I've, I use Photoshop every day. When you say test it in Photoshop, how do you mean adjusting the brightness and contrast and the gamma? Yeah, you know, uh, I have that link. I, I, I hope I sent it to you. I, I wonder what I do sometimes. I'm sending stuff all day long, you know, out there to everybody. Um, I've got a, a um, I'm going to check right now if I send it to you. Uh, I've got a link. Let's see if we gave it to your website, which is now you can prove the uh, WC UFO photo yourself. Um, I don't see it on, on your site, but... One of the pages you sent me was titled Skeptics Wrong Again, Billy Myers, Energy Ship, UFO, Authentic. And then there's there's a link to a very comprehensive PDF uh, document that's uh, real long and very interesting. Right. Well, we now have tests on uh, the three major categories of Myers UFO evidence. There's just no doubt that it's real. It's been done independently by a computer imaging expert in South America who... Um, you know, did, did all this stuff on his own dime to, uh, you know, to find out if, if, if Myers' evidence was was real or not. He found out it was quite real. And he lists his protocols so people can, uh, you know, for themselves, they can uh, test th- this stuff out if they, if they want to. That means that he um, put all of the technology that he used into the information. So if somebody says, well, how did you test the, the Meyer case stuff? He says, well, here, I use this computer uh, imaging uh, you know, software. I use this modeling software. I did this. I did that. So people who have this technology can do it themselves. But there is one. Um, I'm going to send you this link in email. I'll do it right now because I have it in front of me. Okay, and good. Send that to, to me during the break because we, we do need to take this commercial thing here. And we'll be sure. right back in just a few minutes with our uh, last segment with our friend Michael Horn. Be right back. Welcome back to Far Out Radio. We're going into our last segment scene with our friend Michael Horn. We're talking about some new material from the uh, uh, world of Billy Myers. Always something going on there. It's a very, very interesting, fascinating uh, story, uh, Michael. On the other side, we were talking about uh, you know the, the, the UFO obsession and the, the, this business about trying to prove the photos. And uh, I was talking uh, last week or a week before last with uh, uh, researcher uh, Robert Morningstar, and he said that there's a there's a new attitude uh, in our culture these days of I forget the uh, something cognitive skepticism or something. I forget how he the expression he came up with, but it's basically what it boils down to is. There's never going to be enough proof. There are people who are, no matter what you say, they'll say, prove it. And you try to prove it, or maybe you can't actually prove it to them. And they go, ah, 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 ah. that's it. You know. Right. Well, you know, I've, I've written an article. I didn't send it to you. I've got, so, I've got like 370 of them up on my blog. And it was something about what are the criteria that reasonable people use to determine the truth. So if you want to say, well, there are... UFOs, okay, well, that simply means unidentified flying object. We could all grant that. There are extraterrestrial UFOs. Okay, then we go to the Meyer case because there happens to be zero testable evidence for any other claims of extraterrestrial anything. Lots of theories, and people call themselves researchers and all that, but they have to go off of information lying around that there's no firsthand, nothing to test. So with Meyer's photographs and his films, uh, such as, You know, the analyses just recently completed, the wedding cake and the new one of the energy ships. Anybody can go through that. And if you are more knowledgeable, you know, technically, and I am not a super technical guy, you'll understand the analysis from the point of view of people that know what they're talking about with photography, imaging, special effects, all the rest. I sent you a link just a moment ago, and when you have a chance, it says now you can, you know, prove the, the, you know, Meyer case to yourself. There is a nighttime photo of the wedding cake craft. It is a gold glowing object against a black background, and the skeptics have long told us this is just a model against the curtain. Well, our professor in South America took that photo, as anybody now can, 
See, and he dropped it into Photoshop. He lowered the contrast. He brightened it. And voila, it is an object photographed from above hovering over a gravel road that has a whole, you know, grassy field next to it. There's a fence post. 1981, 35 millimeter film photograph that only comes to life in the 21st century when you drop it into Photoshop, which Meyer didn't have in 1981. Now that means that anybody, and, and I have sent this to skeptics, I cannot get one skeptic now to respond because they can't argue. If they do this test themselves, they have to debunk themselves. They're in a box. They're done. Skepticism with the Meyer case is over. Bring them on. Have them put that into Photoshop and then try to explain their way around it. So we've got all the physical evidence that, and, and the expert analysis that authenticates Meyer's photographs of extraterrestrial objects. So you can prove it to yourself. This is, you know, and then when you get into the prophetic scientific information, that's even higher standard of proof. Copyrighted books and documents where Meyer has told things, he publishes it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 years later, we discover the exact same thing. I ran this by a judge. And he, I said, who would win in the courtroom? NASA claims that they you know, were the first to discover the core of Mercury is, is responsible for the contraction of the planet. But Billy Meyer has it here in this book, you know, copyrighted 20, 30 years before. Who wins? He says, you do. <laughs> you prove, that's a legal standard of proof. This is so easy. And all the people that have been chasing lights in the sky and the people in the UFO industry who've been attacking the Meyer case because they want to make a buck off of gullible people with their nonsense abductions and crap, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going down the tubes here and we could have avoided a lot of it. Will we avoid some of it? It will really depend on how many people start hitting their keyboards and typing in Billy Meyer or just straight away going to the sites that are connected with it and learning what these people have been warning us about for the past 63 years. The, uh, the post that I put up about the uh, spiritual teachings of Billy are really, you got to read them qu uh, quietly and slowly. They're really something. <laughs> the spiritual teaching is the core of the case. And yeah, it's on that page titled, Slapping Ourselves Upside the Head. And if you scroll down to the second paragraph... The paragraph title is Spiritual Teaching, and then there's a link that says Spiritual Teaching. And it's got a green yeah. highlight on it. And if you click on it, it takes you to another document, and uh, there are all links to more articles. And uh, just click through there and start reading. This is very touching material. It goes, you know, it goes all, it's way, way beyond, you know, like you said, the lights in the sky and the crafts. Yeah, we just have got to stop this waste of time, you know, because the See, the spiritual teaching, when people hear that word, well, my gosh, it just sounds like, what is that, some religious thing? No, no, no. There's no beliefs. There's no rituals. There's no superstition. Nobody's being sent to purgatory or hell if they don't bow down and do some weird thing. This is about how do we think and act our way in our individual and collective lives out of this down the drain that's happening before our very eyes and that none of our entertainment is going to bring us out of. So this is the core of the whole deal. And I only, only wish that more people were, you know, waking up to it right now. Hmm. Well, one person that woke up to the material that must have been a major um, uh, mental retraining was this NASA uh, scientist that you reference in one of your posts. Uh, yep. That's a huge leap for a guy like that. What is this, Matthew? Uh, you know how to pronounce yeah. his last name? Wiskowitz. We, oh, okay, easier said than read. Wiskowitz. Yeah. Okay. How did you come across this story, Michael? Uh, how did I uh, come across Matthew? Uh, yeah, this, his, uh, his story. Oh, okay. Well, I was contacted by Matthew some, a few years back. He uh, started to look into the Meyer material probably around the same time I did. We didn't know each other. And then he put it aside because... You know, he started to see all, I think as he says in our press release, you know, all, all the disinformation from the CIA and everything. And, and then he said, he's, he, you know, he came back to it and he started to look. He started to read and he started to reason. And he started to think and he got into the spiritual teaching and he, 
the scientific stuff. And he has friends also, other people in the aerospace industry who also are have delved into this. I will t- tell you that there are at least two other people. I've, I've met with one of them. The other guy is also a former top-level, top-secret clearance federal employee. He can't go public. He knows the case is real. And here's one for you, and I can't identify the person, but this, you know, is the straight truth. I've spent over four hours in Skype conversation with a man in the Defense Department in the Pentagon. He knows the case is real. They cannot come forward, these people, for obvious reasons, because, you know, they are enmeshed in a system. They're not all bad people. You know, they're people right. doing their jobs in different departments. In Matthew's case, uh, he's now started to come and join us at the meetings that we have every month in Arizona. He comes and uh, we have weekends where we mainly focus on the spiritual teaching, and we discuss it. We look at how it applies in everyday life. Uh, one of the gentlemen from another space aerospace industry, he's been up there with us. Uh, we've had some interesting people d- drop in. I've got a friend who's a uh, former Team 3 SEAL. He joins us for the meetings. These people know this is real. And you try to get this into the mainstream, and you can't because this is on the radar for all the intelligence agencies and the, and the corporate media do not talk about Billy Meyer. We don't want people abandoning all of our belief systems and our politics and learning that there are a bunch of mindless sheep being led around with their iPhones in their hands. Good gosh. And that what's coming to America from a guy who's the most you know, specific, prolific, uh, you know, prophetically accurate human being who's ever lived, the fact that this place is going to be a hellfire, we don't want people to be distracted with that. Let's wring the last possible dollar out of everybody's pocket, and uh, you know we'll just we'll find ourselves a safe bunker somewhere when all this stuff hits the fan. But that is what we're looking at, folks, because they've got you distracted chasing Kim Kardashian's butt or uh, you know this sports team or that one or lights in the sky. That's Anything a lot but what's important. <laughs> Oh, geez. It's it's all quite amazing. You know, you were mentioning uh, insiders that, who know but just don't want to say. A lot of people lose their jobs if they start yes, on or, their own work. to go. If they start on their own to go to, you know, making maybe writing papers or, or God forbid, leave something, uh, you know, UFO related um, uh, on a Facebook page or whatever, because uh, employers and uh, including. Um, uh, administrations in uh, colleges uh, love to look to see what their what their professors and staff people are posting on their Facebook pages, and people have lost their jobs uh, over their you know freedom of expression. Not only that, you know, my film. I just won my second award on my new film, and did they listen? Which I mean, I'm offering to your listeners with another film for free or whatever that deal is. I, I sent you a link. They don't even have to put in codes, but. My film was banned at Arizona State University. They refused to show it. That's how scared they are of students and faculty starting to think just a little bit outside the box. Mm -hmm. They banned it. (laughs) My goodness. Yeah, there is is an overriding um, effort to suppress truth in so many different arenas. Um, uh, There's a fellow named John Barber who did a documentary film about Jim Garrison. And uh, he tried to put together a, uh, uh, a presentation to uh, show the, the film, and he, he finally got it off. I, I forget where he, the, the venue, but uh, it was not easy to get colleges to uh, say, sure, sure, you know, we're, we're a university, we're about thinking and teaching and open minds and all that kind of stuff. And he did not have a good uh, time finding a place. Eventually found one, good for John, uh, and it was an amazing presentation, but uh, uh, people don't. They don't want to lose their jobs, you know. Yeah, they got mortgages. Who was this, who was uh, John, this guy? Oh, John Barber. Oh. Yeah, Maybe you'll put they, me in touch with him. I'd like to find a university that has the courage to let their students actually see the film and make up their own mind. So I'll I'll see what I can do. Uh, we have about a minute left. Uh, Billy Meyer is 77 years old. Uh, how's he doing, and do you have any plans to go see him in the near future? Well, I'd love to go back there. I've been very busy here. He is doing fine. His energy is good. Uh, the state of the world is not so good. But if I get a chance to, I certainly am going to, uh, you know, go go back over and say hi to Billy. He's going to be 78 in February. I, it's a beautiful place. I'd love the opportunity. I just have to see if it's in, in the cards. 
All right. Michael, thanks for being with us tonight. I appreciate it. You're always a pleasure. Scott, thank you. Much appreciated. Okay. Take care. We'll Bye. talk soon. That is our program for this evening. Thanks for being with us this coming Wednesday night on Far Out Radio. Our pal Bob Frizzell will be back with us and we'll be talking, continuing our conversation about the uh, ancient Egyptian mystery schools. That should be very far out. Have a great night. Be back Wednesday.